Commission. It is Tuesday, August 30th, 2022, and it is currently six o'clock. Um, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unper unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Um, may I get a roll call, please? Richard Mancini, present via Zoom. Joyce Rodericks, present. Justin Cantara Oliveira, present, attending remotely by Zoom. Elizabeth DeBoer, present via Zoom. And Jason Bouchard Naraki, uh, present, attending by Zoom. Uh, we have one open seat uh, on the Historical Commission. Um, all right, and so let's see. Um, may I, let's see, we have the minutes that um, Elizabeth sent around uh, from the last meeting, August 16th. Um, were there any questions on it or concerns? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. A second. All right. I have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, next up on the agenda, item four, citizen input. I don't think we have any. Okay. <coughs> all right. Um, next on the agenda is... Um, Number 5A is the notice of intent to demolish a structure, uh, 317 Hanover Street. Um, that is the property that is uh, it is listed on the city's register of significant, uh, significant structures. Um, the hospital uh, is working our way through uh, probate to acquire the house, the group of houses on that corner. Um, they still intend on demolishing the, the property uh, and um, regarding uh, additional parking for the neighborhood. Um, so I know we had approved with uh, contingencies uh, last year, I think was it October, I think it was, um, but I don't think a demo permit has actually been issued yet because they didn't, they didn't own the property. Um, so um, Kristen, what is the, is there an expiration on, on our, approval it's one year it's one year okay one year from the date that we gave our approval so they will they will have to come back if they haven't applied um for the demo permit at that okay. point so and so i don't believe they have either because yeah. I, I mean they still don't own the property correct mm. no i know they were working on getting um i know they had a variance that was passed um but that that was the that was the extent of it. Um, right. There was um, a letter that was sent from the lawyer. Uh, I believe they've now changed lawyers to Killerin. Um, so they still intend on um, uh, working with the neighborhood to create a little parklet on the corner or some green space um, to kind of buffer the properties that, that are that will be on well the properties that are on Summerfield. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it might be a good idea to reach out to the hospital group again, just to kind of get a, a recommittal of, of their right. intentions on the property. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we still have the ability to waive that um, if, if they agree to what they had agreed to in the first place. And if not, we can still put the six month delay on it, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Were there any other questions on item 5A? I will reach out to the hospital groups to see if they can come before us again. You may also want to just reach out to the building department and let them know um, that if they do apply that our letter, you know, the, the letter that we had given the pool on really is only good for one year. So if it's after that date, they need to come back first that that letter is no longer valid. Okay. So. Okay. Take care of that. Um, anything else regarding that one? 
No, I pushed that. Okay. Um, let's see. Next up, um, we have uh, let's see, correspondence uh, item 6A. Um, this is again for 317 Hanover. Um, it was a letter uh, sent from the attorney's office regarding the uh, proposed demolition. Um, I did send that around to everyone. Um, and uh, let's see, it indicates uh, please be advised that I'm writing a reference to 317 Hanover Street, Fall River. Massachusetts, map 17, lot 32. I represent South Coast Hospital, Hospitals Group Incorporated, who has entered into a purchase and sale agreement to purchase this property along with 305 Hanover and 309 Hanover Street. It is the intention of my client to demolish all three of these buildings and will be applying for a demolition permit for all three properties. I have been informed that 317 Hanover Street has been designated as a historical structure. So therefore, please let this letter serve as our notice of intent to demolish. Please be further advised that my client remains committed to creating a small area with some green space, which will encompass some material from the historical, uh, historic home with a plaque. If the board has any questions or concerns, do not hesitate to reach out to my office at any time. And that was from Thomas Killerin. Um, the next item was regard uh, item 6B was regarding um, the force block uh, National Register of Historic Places nomination. Um, this is similar to what they had sent over that I uh, talked about at the last meeting. Um, the building at 171 Pleasant Street um, the Benjamin and Nathan building um, is going to be nominated for the National Register of Historic Places. Um, the Massachusetts Historical Commission will be uh, hearing or um, considering the nomination at their next meeting on September 14th, I believe it is. Um, it was just a general correspondence um, regarding that, uh, as I mentioned, to continue from last month. Um, See. And so is there anything we need to do? Nope. Um, if it, basically it's just if there's any objections that we had to um, the uh, the nomination, um, I one I'm surprised is not already listed on the National Register, um, but I believe it's more so for tax credit purposes. Um, so there was nothing indicating that we had to do anything if we choose to. Um, attend uh, to show support. Um, there's no letter that they need or anything of that that nature, unless we had a post it, which I don't think we really <laughs> we don't want to post a, a building going out of the national onto the national mm -hmm. register. Mm -mm. No, considering you know the amount of work that they've done already, it's a good building. And it's one of the only buildings that survived the uh, the great fire. Exactly right on the answer. So uh, it definitely needs to be there. So yeah. Yep. Excellent. Um, and the, so that was six, six B. Um, the next item was, uh, six C it was the agenda that was, uh, sent to me from the zoning board of appeals. Uh, their next meeting is scheduled on September 15th. Um, there were three items listed on there. Um, if we decide to have a discussion on them or not, uh, the first one, uh, item I was the, uh, Weaver street, um, development, uh, the demolition of the current structure and the uh, building of a 160 foot residential tower. Um, we did send a letter to the Zoning Board of Appeals for their last meeting. So this is being continued from that prior meeting. Um, the other item on their agenda was 317 Hanover Street. Uh, again, we had just covered that, but it was regarding their variance for the parking. Um, so I believe they're looking for an extension on their variance uh, to, I think, November, uh, because their variance is also expiring. Um, and item, uh, the next item was 761 Highland Avenue, um, the Robert Kerr House. This is in the Highlands National Register District. Um, the owner is proposing on converting the existing nursing home structure, in, uh, which is zoned uh, in S, which is single family, into nine residential units. Um, so they're looking for a variance to exceed the uh, capacity of the unit, uh, the maximum units that they can have in the, in the zone. Um, there's no indication on alterations to the exterior, so they're building within the footprint of the structure. Uh, but, but again, it's nine 
residential units in that structure. Um, so that is scheduled for September 15th if we have any objections. I would not be surprised if there are uh, objections or uh, concerns from the neighborhood, considering it is uh, it is a residential neighborhood with mostly single family houses uh, right on Highland. I think that's Stanley Street on the corner. It's on the corner of Highland and Stanley. Yeah. Yep. And I, so I've worked in that building. I worked there when it was a nursing home. I have no idea how they will fit nine apartments in there. Like, mm. honestly, no idea how they can possibly, unless they are going to be studio apartments with one room there's no possible way they can fit right. nine apartments in that in that building mm -hmm. yeah it's and considering they're not adding on to the building and plus um yeah, there's no there's not really enough room for parking so i would imagine that most of it will be street parking which it's pretty th that part of stanley street is a little yeah. busy um the only way they could do parking would be if they knock down the garage and they tar what's mm. the backyard of it, then they could, because they have a, a circular, so like a horseshoe driveway in front and then it goes up on the side. So unless they completely wipe out the whole backyard and the garage that's there, then they could make some parking. Right. But I just, I don't understand how they're going to turn that into nine no. apartments. No, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. Um, but um, I mean, I don't object as long as they're not touching the outside of the building. I have no objections. Right. We don't have any. We don't have jurisdiction on the interior of that property. Plus, yeah. it's not in the the 40C. Um, no. The only protection that has is a demolition delay because it's on the national register and the city's register. So, right. um, that's the only you know, limitation that we have. Um, I but, would ask the question if it's um, up for sale at this point as a single family unit. No, it was sold. Mm -hmm. oh, it's already sold. It was already sold. Yeah. To the nine, that. to the company that wants the nine units. Yeah. Right. Uh, Tetro Real Estate, I think it's called. Um, they uh, purchased it, I believe, at auction. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, it is a significant. It is a significant house uh, historically. The um, the Kerr family had. The, the Kerr Mill over down on uh, uh, South Watapa for, uh, you know, that when did it burn in the 80s so that they are affiliated, that house is affiliated with that major mill in the city. Um, but, you know, aside from that, we don't really have, aside from, you know, stressing our concerns, I think, for the, um, the parking situation for any exterior alterations they might do, but it doesn't look like they're going to be touching the exterior. Is there any questions or concerns on that? Well, just what Kristen points out on how did you how do you get nine units into that building? Um, I would wonder if it's within a uh, venue to ask uh, for a review by the fire department. I don't think we have that. No, we don't. We don't have we, we yeah. have no we have no purview over anything on the inside. It's just if they want to do any kind of demolition. So unless they're going to do anything to the outside that um, requires a demolition permit, then we we really have no say. All we can do is give our opinion, but mm -hmm. we can't have the fire department go there. And I mean, I'm sure they they obviously it, it would have to be cleared by the fire department anyway because you can't get a, a you know a resident certificate. You can't get a certificate to live in there without it. So. Mm -hmm. Um, should we? Um, would it be worthwhile for a, for a letter to be drafted, just stating our concerns on the, I guess the exterior, maintaining the exterior of the building, and? It, I think it might be, especially um, my my big concern, and I would think that they would keep it in there. Um, it, on the Stanley Street side, there is a huge, gorgeous stained glass window that goes up the entire staircase. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my concern, obviously, is they would get rid of that. But I would think that if they if they bought that property, they would have enough common sense to keep it there because it really does. It looks beautiful when it's lit at night. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they're I, I don't know if they're applying for tax credits, um, but um, there was no indication on that. I don't know. Yeah. So. Hello, Jim. So. 
Um, all right, so I will, I can draft a letter um, to the zoning board. Um, anything else on that before we move on? All right, um, we have uh, no old business, um, new business um, 8A. We have a list of um, letters of support that um, is being requested from uh, Ryan LLC. Uh, we have Emily uh, here to go over each item that we have. <laughs> so, um, the first one is the Adams House, uh, and most of these uh, have been we've approved before in the past for letters of support. Um, our board had made a, um, had voted to bring, whenever another letter of support was needed, uh, we will have um, the representatives back to go over any changes that were made. Um, and if we have any questions, I know we had some questions at our last meeting on a few of these items. Um, so, I guess we can start with the Adams House. Um, Emily, uh, you said nothing is really being changed for, for most of these, for the most part. Yeah, pretty much um, nothing has changed. Um, actually, I do, do see that Durfee, Bradford Durfee Textile School is on there. Mm -hmm. um, that project is done and we are submitting the part, I think we submitted the part three um, of the tax credit application this week. So we, we don't actually need a letter for that project since it's done. Excellent. So the building looks fantastic. Yeah. I Sorry, I'm looking up at the agenda. That's why I keep looking. I took a tour of that building when it was just about finished and it's incredibly beautiful inside. They did such a, a great job in that building. Those new windows too, they pop when you drive down Durfee Street. I, that's one of the only ones on this list that I ha I'm not involved with that okay. that much. So I haven't actually seen that one finished, okay. but I'll definitely have to. Um, and Adam's Adam's house was um, is that completed? It is mostly done at this point. Um, there is there are a few final things left to do. Um, and then before they file for the complete CFO. All right. Um, oh, yeah. Are we on the Adams house? Is that what you just did, Emily? Yes. You switched over to the Adams house? Yeah. Is Okay. And the question was, is there any remaining work to be done on the project? Is that the question? Yeah, essentially there was some minor work on, I think the elevator. Um, there are occupants in there. They've been moved in for a few months. So it, it's mostly done. They're trying to get another round of funding um, and then they'll file for their part three early next year. Is it fully occupied at this point? I think the um, I think the yeah I think the residential units are fully occupied. Are there other areas other than residential? Because you just said the residential units are occupied. Does that mean there are other units? Um, residential. There is. Uh, there are spaces related to the residential. So the like gym. Um, common area, but no commercial space okay. in the building. Okay. So the common areas are not completed, I guess, <laughs> you know, just a little brief rundown, I guess, of what's going on with the building and how it's progressing. Yeah, it's, it's, if you went, went there, it's almost completely done. Um, I don't think you would even notice that there's anything left to do there. There's one small area when, when I was there, but this was also a couple of months ago. So um, that was not completed um, on the ground floor, common area, the gym, I believe it was the gym. Um, and then, the, like I said, the, something related to the elevator had to be 
an S. Is there a single elevator in that building? Just one? There. I, I'm trying to remember. There's There were two. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's two. Okay, that's, so it's, it's pretty much done. 99.99% .99 <laughs> completed, huh? Okay. Yeah. Now, nothing's, nothing further on the exterior of the building? No additional landscaping? No changes in the landscape? Nope. Okay. Um, Kristen, um, do we go through each one should we go through each one and go to approve letters of support for each one, or do we need do we need a vote on the? the I uh, guess I mean that's what that's what everyone had decided they wanted to do um, back then. I guess my my concern in all this was I I know we have some questions, but my big concern is I mean Mass Historical Commission oversees this whole project and I think sometimes us nitpicking at the little things is kind of a waste of time, but that's just my opinion. I mean, unless we have some major concerns about things, I'm not really sure what good it does to, to do this every every three months if mm -hmm. nothing really has changed and if we don't have any major concerns. Mm -hmm. I know there's one, there's one property that I have some major concerns about and I'll bring that up at the time. But I mean, I'm not, I don't know, unless if we want to revisit that policy or not, I really, I don't know. But my own feeling is I, I think it kind of wastes a little bit of time. To just, I mean, we're not Mass Historical Commission. They know exactly what the project is. They go over everything. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be submitted to them. So I, I don't think it's really our job to micromanage these things. Okay. You know, unless they're really veering from what they originally came to us with. That's just my opinion on that. Okay. Um, so, so do we have any other questions on the Adams House? For a letter of support? No. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Do you want to take a vote on every one of these so that sure. it, it make it easier? Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. So this is for the Adams House. All right, so we need a motion on the Adams House. I'll make a motion to approve a letter of support for Adams House. Okay, and I'll second that. All right, I have a motion and a second uh, for a letter of support on the Adams House. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay, excellent. Um, jumping back onto uh, item two, which is the Bradford Durfee Textile School. Um, Emily said that the building is completed, that they've already submitted part three for their tax credit application. Um, so there's no letter that's needed um, on that one. Um, <clears throat> the next item is the ILGWU building on uh, Third Street, um, which I believe work just started on that or recently. Yeah, they've, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. If they completed, they were doing environmental remediation to begin with and starting the exterior. So the were because the neighboring building, the Allen Slade building, is already done, and these two buildings will be listed together on the National Register. Um, they're really pushing to get as much on the exterior done so that we can hopefully get those two buildings on the next MHC National Register agenda. So we are hoping by October the exterior will be done. Oh, great. Is that going to be strictly residential apartments or are there some commercial units going in there? So far, it's only residential. Um, and, you know, there may be an opportunity on the ground floor to do something else. Um, but as of right now, there's, that's just a basement area. I'm not sure if we can get anything, any light in there. Um, but if we didn't change that, that's something we can let you know about. 
How many units are presently planned for that, do you know? Uh, yeah, I have it right here. J uh, 15. 15? Nice. Good. Okay. Now, there was an issue over there for parking, too. How did that get resolved? I, w I wasn't involved in that. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, so it's the building. Uh, so environmental remediation has started, um, and they hope to have the exterior done by October. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Any other questions on that? On the, the ILG? Is, is there any construction going on within the interior at all? Emily? Well, yeah, the the environmental was all on the interior, the abatement. So they're just starting with the demo. Okay. So it's strictly demo, no no construction, uh, no reconstruction. Okay. I, I don't think so yet. No. Okay. Good. Cool. Any other questions on that one? Okay. For a letter of support. Um, I'll make a motion to give a letter of support for the ILGWU building. Okay. Second the motion. All right. I have a motion and a second uh, for a letter of support for the ILGWU building. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, the next one is uh, the Lincoln School. Um, so that one, I think that's the one that a few of us have questions on. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so the did the property change hands because the application is currently under David Hebert and I thought he sold the property. I could be wrong. Well, if it was sold, then we were we were not notified. I, I believe they're looking to sell it. Okay. But I don't think it has had sold yet. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, Kristen. So that's where my concern is. I know that the property was up for sale and um, it was being marketed as having the, the tax credits with it. Um, and I don't understand how that can happen because if you're marketing a property, unless the person taking over is going to do exactly what you had on your plan, then that's, that's like a big concern for me. Um, Considering he's not doing anything with this property, there's no work that's being done on it, and he's actively marketing the property. I don't see how we, at this point, can give a letter of support for it because nothing's being done according to what was told was going to be done. And, you know. And there's that issue too where I think items, um, I don't know how significant they were, but items within the building were being stripped and sold on like Facebook Marketplace or something like that. Right. Um, but I don't think that they were of um, you know, that you know, drastic or, or I guess that more that important of, of part of the interior of the building. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, he's actively per, uh, selling the building, trying to sell the building, you know, with the bundled plans with tax credits supposedly, you know, in place and so, but. You know, that's, that's the point exactly why I think, I believe that these meetings are necessary because here's a classic example. And if we just arbitrarily signed off on these letters, these things would get by us. And I'm, uh, I'm in favor of Kristen's statement. I don't think we should give them a letter of support because nothing has been done. In fact, the building and the property, the exterior and, and the wall and the retaining wall, it's all deteriorating. So it's getting, the condition is not improving, it's deteriorating. And we're going to approve more funding. Uh, I, so my vote will not be in the positive fashion on this particular letter either. And, and, and I agree with you, Kristen. This and this is all the more reason why I think these meetings, as mundane as they might be at times, I think are important to continue in this fashion. Right, but I, I'm not saying that we should never have discussions on it. I think if 
I mean, obviously it's up to us to monitor the things that we give letters for, but I just don't see why we have to have somebody in to discuss every single one every time unless we really have a concern about a property. I mean, this we have a concern about, but the rest of them, I mean, you know, we know that they're being done. We know that we can see the properties are being worked on and, and all of that. So it, it's just that this one, we do know that there's an issue with it and that's why, but I just don't see why like every three months or so we have to discuss every single one of them. Like to me, that's where the waste comes in. If we have concerns, then yes. That's that's all I'm saying. We can always uh, oh go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, I was I was just um going to say two things just to, to, to plead my case on this one. One, I would say if there is something that we can do to have your support on this, even you know, I know it does you're not happy with the progress to date. There are a lot of complicating factors on this project um we i mean i'd be happy to figure it out or you know try to get a more concrete update on what the plan is to uh, there is value in having the credits um for another developer who might see the credits in a building and the plans and want to it's been applying for a long time so it has a pretty decent amount of money at this point I don't know off the top of my head I would have to look back or or you can look it up on the Secretary of State's website but that could be appealing and it could be a way that the building does end up being preserved using cr credits instead of um, being demolished or uh, redeveloped without that consideration. Now, if a future buyer comes in and you know they have this bundle of the tax credits, the architectural plans, but they decide to go a different direction, um, at what point, how far, how, I guess, how far from the original plan would it nece uh, necessitate uh, a applying for, or I guess, would the, the tax credits be invalid at that point? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's an easy answer to that. It could, you know, if it's completely different, it's possible they could not use the credits. Um, but yeah, that would have to be something that was evaluated at that time. So how how would the tax credits just automatically carry over to another buyer when Massive Circle Commission doesn't know what the other buyer's plans are? Um, but I don't really, I, I thought the tax credits were for the person who owns the building and who is actively doing work on the building. That's, that was my understanding of how. In you, um, you would get written affidavits um, saying that none of the credits have been used and you do an ownership transfer, which happens from time to time for various reasons. Um, sometimes it's just you start with a one owner and then they form a, an LLC just for the project. And so you do an ownership transfer or it is sold and then that there are ways to transfer the credits. So is there a reason why all this time that he's had the building and he's been applying for tax credits, he has not done anything in the build in the building? <laughs> um, it's my understanding there's some uh, he is maybe had some legal troubles. Yeah, has, that, has that has that been resolved? I mean, because I, I just I don't feel comfortable giving more letters of support so he can amass more tax credits and when absolutely nothing is being done. I, I just so if we were to if so if we end up not approving a letter of support for 
the Lincoln School. And I think that one drops the value of the building or uh, as it's being marketed, but then two, um, the future buyer would have to go through the whole process all over again um, to apply for tax credits. Um, so you know, there's a few different. So they wouldn't have to do that if, if he continues with the tax credits and someone new takes it over? they don't have to apply themselves for any tax credits. They just automatically have the ones that are there. Is that how it works? Because I, I they would I likely continue, continue until they reach the maximum amount of credit uh, MHC would allocate, which can go up to 20%, but it's typically less than that 15 to 18%. And they, and they don't receive the funds, the tax credits, um, until after the project is completed, basically. So, mm -hmm. okay. I think there was concern because I, I forgot how much he, he bought the building for. It wasn't much. Um, Five thousand, $5, I believe. $5,000. And then yeah. it's being marketed for how much? Uh, eight, nine. It was, when I had seen it, it was like eight ninety five or something like that. So that's a... <laughs> um, isn't, yeah. there an, isn't there an oversight on these uh, tax credits at the local level? Just asking. I would think at the state level there is. Well, then what's the oversight? I mean, we, we just don't get tax credits from someplace and whoever is signing off on them needs to provide an oversight. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't really understand how they're they're even getting them if nothing's being done in the building. That's that's where I'm initially confused. Besides the other things, if we hop back on the last meeting we had regarding this building, we were promised a tour. We were concerned about things being removed, and we were promised a tour. They were going to contact us and arrange some type of tour for us so at least we could go in and see what was going on and what the intent was and that never did occur uh, so th there doesn't seem to be any desire to us to help us in any fashion to make these decisions uh, and again i'm still opposed to it you, my vote's going to be negative on this one um, is there any other do we have any other uh, questions on the Lincoln School? Uh, okay. Um, yeah, there's there are a lot of questions that we can't really get answered because you know um, the owner is um, not actively working on the building, and we just know we know what we know that it's for sale. It's being bundled together with. Um, plans and um, tax credits, so, but should he, I mean, the value I think would, I, I don't know, I don't know how that works, but, um, all right, do we have any other questions on the Lincoln School for a letter of support? I will just say there's a lot, there's some, there's some stuff I don't know. I'm not trying to be weird about it. I mm -hmm. just, you know, we're, we are hired for the tax credit process and we're not necessarily informed of everything that's going on with the, with the project. So I'm not trying to be dishonest about anything. I'm just telling you okay. what I know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, can I get a motion to, for, uh, for a letter of support? I'll make a motion that we deny the letter of support. I'll second that motion. All right, I have a motion and a second to deny a letter of support for the Lincoln School. Um, can I get a roll call on votes? I vote negatively on this letter of support. All right. I vote no for a letter. Also on this letter of support. 
Uh, choice that was a no. Okay, Joyce, th that was a no. Oh, I said, yeah, I, I guess okay. I lost that. Uh, yeah. I vote negatively on this letter of support. Rick, Joyce, Kristen, Elizabeth. Um, I vote no. And I, uh, um, Jason Bouchard, also vote no uh, for letter of support on the Lincoln School. All right, um, the next item is the Notre Dame Rectory. Um, Emily, were, were, is there, are there any changes to that, the uh, Notre Dame Rectory, I think on East on Eastern Ave? Not right now. Has work, uh, has work started on the building? No work has started and I believe some funding that they were hoping to get, they did not get. So that's that's delaying construction a little bit. Okay. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions on um, on the application for the Notre Dame Rectory for a letter of support? For funding, so um, do they do they ha have a, a, a timeline or an expected uh, date to hopefully have funding secured by? I'm I'm not sure what the what the latest on that is. Okay, I think maybe what would be helpful is if we actually have the applicants where we have these concerns about certain projects have the actual applicants come before us because like Emily said she's only um, she she's only privy to certain information she really doesn't know the big picture and and I mean we obviously we appreciate Emily's time and in, in doing this um, but I think that at some point it's probably worth it to have this conversation with the, the people that are the, the applicants um, so that we know. And, and I agree, Kristen, again, because that was the original intent that we would get the architect or the builder or someone or the owner right. uh, in the past that would come in also. Uh, right. okay. uh, Tony Cadero has come in on his property on a number of occasions. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think Bobby Carum came in a couple of times on his piece of property. Uh, so this this is the understanding, and it's worked well in the past. Uh, I don't know why it's not happening now because we, we you know, we we got another building that's just sitting there. Nothing's being done yet. You you want us to approve more tax credits for? It, it's there's not even demolition going on in that building. It's just right. sitting there. Yeah. It actually looks like it's it's getting structurally worse because I went by it the other day and it, it just it looks like it's just getting in rougher and rougher shape. And I, I think that's the same building that also had quite a bit of um, uh, fixtures uh, salvaged from the interior, um, from what I recall. Um, that I don't mean. Yeah, I, I can't remember exactly what was removed, but anyways, um, so I mean, there are, I mean, that's minimal compared to what the, the work that needs to be done. Um, can we, um, <clears throat> uh, regarding a letter of support for the Notre Dame Rectory, um, I know they're still working out their financing. Um, so I don't know if that's a red flag. I don't know. Um, but do I have um, any? The, on the last, when that was uh, originally proposed, Ken Fiola was down to speak in favor and, and gave us an explanation and, and did a very thorough job, by the way. He and, and mm -hmm. I, uh, one of the representatives from the organization itself uh, were present. And it was very good. We got a lot of answers. Uh, and it would, it would uh, be becoming here if, if we had a, someone knowledgeable in with the building owner or representative of the owner and the construction phase to give us these types of answers. You know, no, it's, it's a, 
uh, it's being held up because of financing or no mm -hmm. financing is there, but we can't get the contract to start it. I mean, okay. At least get some information. And we're, they, doing it. we're just rubber stamping letters. I, 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 I would think that we should hold ourselves to a higher standard than just rubber stamping. No, I, I, I have one more. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, so another thing to consider with the tax credit process these days is that because it is competitive, the funding takes a lot longer than it used to because the allocations are smaller. So sometimes that unfortunately means that buildings have to sit a little bit longer yeah. before anything can get done. Right, and uh, the, from from experience, the company I work for, we have a number of historic properties in Providence and we've gone through the tax credit process and um, uh, oftentimes we can't get funding, we can't secure our funding unless we have the tax credit, um, the letter, um in place um so sometimes we can't even get a construction loan for uh restoration work because we don't have the tax credit um we don't have the tax credit secured um so that you know that could thwart the project if they if we decide to not support this a letter of support for this particular project if they're trying to secure funding at this point but it is not this letter on a quarterly basis to just keep increasing that funding because you got the, the original letter was sent out. They have the tax credit. Now, three months later, they want another tax credit. Is that for an incremental increase in the credit? Well, so the state, um, whereas you know, National Park Service gives you 20% at the end of your, your qualified costs. The state might only give, I think they might be only getting um, 100,000 or 200,000 each round. So to get up to the 20%, um, it, it takes a couple of years where, I mean, you, you, most projects don't even have that lead time to get close to the 20%. Okay, so I'm, I'm, on, I'm thinking correctly then. So what I'm saying to you is that it appears they've already received a tax credit of X amount of dollars. Now they want another sum of money, but they're not doing any construction. They're not doing any renovations. They're not doing anything at all. The building is just sitting there, but yet they want us to endorse their allocations for more money. So that, that's where my, that's where I, I sort of stumbled a little bit. I, I have a tough time understanding that. And if the owner or the architect who's on that or the, the builder were to sit down with us and sort of explain what's going on, then okay maybe maybe we'd look at it a little differently but i find yeah. it very difficult to allocate monies and give the authorization to on our end to, to acquire more money when nothing's being done so they will likely come before us again um for the next i would imagine for the next round sure um but um as you said the project really hasn't started um but the whole project can also be jeopardized if we don't approve a letter because they will if they're trying to secure funding construction loans i'm sure um you know that can jeopardize their ability to secure funding to start the project which can delay anything really happening from uh, with the building um but we don't know what's happening with that we don't know if they deciding not to do anything or we are looking to sell it. We have no idea. We, we can't get that type of information. And unfortunately, the de the deadline for the letters is tomorrow. Um, so we're kind of up against. You know, yeah, I think. I mean, for me personally, on, on this particular one, 
I can understand that there's a delay. I know that that does happen sometimes. So I'm not as concerned as I am about the Lincoln School, which has dragged on for quite a few years now. And so my, my concern there. Um, this one, it's still fairly new in the process, so I understand that. And I, I personally would be willing to give a letter if, as long as before the next, um, before the next round, we actually have somebody come in and give us an update. I'd be willing to still give a letter at, at this point. And then, if they're not willing to come before us the next time, then my, you know, my answer to that would probably be a lot different. But this time. I think I wouldn't, but as you know, the difference between this and the Lincoln School is we we have asked for updates on the Lincoln School, and we were told that we would be able to meet with someone and take a tour and all that, and that never happened. Whereas this is the first time we're really bringing this up about um, you know the, the Notre Dame. So at this point, I'm still I'm still in favor. I'm not making a relationship between the Lincoln School and 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 the Notre Dame property. My statement was strictly for the Notre Dame, and and I, my Lincoln was here. So. Oh no, I know. I'm just saying. For me, that's how I view, that's how I view the two. This one, I sure. still think, because it's early in the process, and I know that these things tend to happen. I do have concerns, but I'm willing to still give a letter of support at this point, if as as long as we have a commitment that they will come before us before the next. Um, before the next round of letters. I think the next round is in December. December, okay. Isn't it December, Emily? And the meeting is Jan or the sorry, the deadline is January 15th. Oh. So okay. And this building only sold, oh God, was it last year? It wasn't long ago. So they're no, it, as you it, said, it, yeah. this is very new. Well, yeah, they're sort of they're they haven't been through the, the process as long as uh, Lincoln School has, but mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it's still very early in the game for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And we've submitted amendments and things over this as recently as, you know, we heard back in June, I think. So mm. it's not like nothing's going on behind the scenes right. and, uh, you know, the architects and probably working on the full design set mm. right now. Right. A lot of that. A lot of that work takes place behind the scenes, really during the waiting game. Um, I mean, we've, um, you know, I, I know that the company, uh, or at least in my professional experience, we've had to sat, we've sat on buildings for, you know, close to a year and a half, almost two years before anything, any any shovels are in are in the dirt, and um, you know, demo work is being done on the inside. So it, it does take a while for, you know. For the you know once you get into the construction phase, just to get there. Okay. Um, any other questions or concerns on uh, Notre Dame uh, for a letter of support? So I'd be willing to make a motion to um, give a letter of support for Notre Dame, contingent on the fact that before the next round of letters, they do come to us and give us an update. Okay. And that'll be put in a letter form, uh, uh, Kristen? Is that what your, your, your motion is? Yeah, I, I think we definitely should send a letter to, right. the, uh, to the applicant. Yeah. All right. I'll, 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 I'll concede to that uh, because this is only the second round. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll I'll concede, but, but I'm with you. We've okay. got to get some uh, good solid data before the next third quarter. So I have a motion. Is that a Rick Reese? I'll, I'll, I'll second that. Sure. I have a motion in the second for a letter of support for the Notre Dame Rectory, uh, contingent that they come before us uh, before the next round of funding, which. The deadline is January 15th of 2023. Um, so motion, I have a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, the next item is the Union Belt Company. Um, Emily, is there any other, any uh, updates on that at all? At all? No, no real updates on Union Belt. Um, 
we've had to provide them with additional photos of the interior. We are finally able to get into some spaces that we weren't able to get into previously. So they wanted more mm -hmm. um, photos um, them being MHC. Um, but uh, documentation that, photos. Yeah. Okay. So work has not really started on that yet. No. Okay. Yeah, we're still in the approve, trying to get everything approved. Sure. Okay. <laughs> but they're actively in the process at this point. Yeah, very much mm -hmm. still pursuing yes. it. And, and, and he's, he's generally, he being, uh, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> is usually, you know, Anthony Cadero is usually right on the stick with this. So I have mm -hmm. no, I have no questions there. Okay. I'll make a motion to give a letter of support for the Union Bell Company. Okay. And I'll second that also. All right. Motion and a second to, uh, for a letter of support for Union Belt Company. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay. It's easy. Uh, and the next item, which is new on the uh, for the um, letters of support, is the Sanford spinning. Uh, Emily, um, can you tell us a little bit about that project? <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, the, I don't. I don't know if you any of you have looked at the materials. Um, I, I should have reminded myself. It's it's a, a mill building with basically two parallel mills. Um, it's across or it's right next to a school and then across from another project mill project that's currently being. Uh, it might even be close to finishing um, a, more housing units across, across the way. Um, so currently proposing 200 units in the buildings. Um, it's a center double loaded corridor units mm -hmm. on either side. Typical mill elements <laughs> to be left exposed and um yeah we're, we're it's pretty i mean pretty early in the application process we applied for the national park service part two first and that was maybe uh, 30 to 45 days ago so we haven't heard back from mhc on that application yet um but we're hoping to that maybe they'll release it when they release the uh, allocation and responses from the okay. last round. Um, and I noticed there are some non-historical buildings or uh, on the property that will likely get demolished as part of the project. Um, it did list uh, like some additions to the buildings. Um, so let's see. But basically, the, it's oh, go ahead. Yeah, it's the the built. There's a lot of um, smaller bump outs, metal, corrugated metal garage, um, and then on the front, there's a two-story building. It's an infill, um, and then there are there's some wood construction, which part. Part of it may have been um, built with the original mill, but it's it has been so heavily modified over time, and like a new facade is basically put on some of the sections of it. Um, so are any are to know. were there any um, for any of the standalone structures that are on the property? Um, are they list so this? property the inventory of the of the whole property is on the national register um or the buildings so are there any buildings that are listed on that registry that will uh, that will be demolished at all or is it um it's just the non-contributing structures that will be demolished um so it's a little bit unclear if the structure is 
some of um I don't know if you have it in front of you. There is a um Sanborn or sorry, uh, like an atlas that shows the the property as is. And okay. there were some structures in those locations, but the inside and out have been um, changed so much that it's unclear if it's actually the same, it has a similar footprint, but okay. if it's the same building. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of looking to see at what MHC's feedback will be on on the demolition of those because it they could consider it potentially a contributing resource. When, okay, it, yeah, it's, well. it's pretty definitive as to what's being removed. Mm -hmm. Your description is very definitive. Mm -hmm. We that yeah I personally like that because you can read into it then and you know what you're getting. So yeah. and we'll luckily have once they once a demo permit is issued or before that demo permit is issued they will um will get notification from planning on buildings that are if there's any outbuildings or anything like that that will be demolished so we'll have to meet with the owners at that point um so you know go over any concerns but exactly. um, in general um i mean and it's very normal for a mill rehab to lose some of its smaller outbuildings that don't really have any purpose today um, especially if the building's becoming, um, uh, you know, multi-residential. Um, so, um, okay. And, and they're removing some of the non-historic uh, yeah. looking windows and we're going to replace those with something of a more historic character. That's all, that's all good things. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's yeah. in their favor. I, 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 and I think the mill that's across the street that's currently being rehabbed, um, uh, I mean, that's progressing pretty well. Um, so. I just sent a photo in the um, the chat of or the historic image or of the building. Um, so one of the one of the ones that's proposed to be demolished had you know sawtooth roof and glass front. And if you do if you look at this. Um, if you looked at the Google Street View now, it's, it's a completely <laughs> mm. different looking. Okay. Um, so this is a new application. Um, so uh, we don't have, uh, I mean, obviously more, we'll have, we'll be meeting with the owners at one point or another, especially if things start, uh, if they need to take some buildings down or, um, but I think the application is pretty, very thorough. Um, listing out literally every every aspect of the property, all the different buildings and um, the documentation of that. And, um, you know, it's great to see um, some effort being done on reusing these mills. Um, so that's what the city's known for, <laughs> really what the city's <laughs> known for of all the mills. Um, okay. Very good. Um, is there any other questions on the application. This is the their first application for tax credits. No, all right. Um, this is for a letter of support for Sanford Spinning. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we give this uh, Sanford Spinning Company a, a letter of approval. Great. Second the motion. All right. Uh, I have a second and a, I'm sorry, a motion and a second for a letter of support for Sanford Spinning. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Cool. All right, Emily, thank you so much for joining in yeah. and answering our questions and um, we'll get those letters to you uh, before tomorrow. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I appreciate you squeezing this in. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. I for really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, our pleasure. Okay. Thank you so thank much. You. Have a good evening and week. You yep. too. And, uh, Bye. Great. So next we have, um, Item 8B, which is Liberty Utilities. Um, there was a notice that was sent around to residents in the, uh, a lot of residents who are in the 40C district. Uh, we have Jim Sewell from 
um, the Fall River Preservation Society here to talk about that. Hi, folks. Hi, Jim. Uh, Jim Soul from the Preservation Society of Fall River. I reside at 577 Rock Street in Fall River. Um, so uh, I, I'm glad I get to speak about this for a minute. And I think you, this is already on your radar. Uh, as we all know, this has been a, actually an issue now, um, seems it's been happening more, uh, more recently. Uh, and you know, uh, I'm pretty sure that it's a general rule even without a 40C historic district, that the, the utilities companies, gas and electric, th that they're supposed to avoid putting their meters on the front of historic homes. Uh, so that's my first statement. Uh, and I think that, uh, but I think, you know, Far River's gone a long time without much of a preservation movement. So it might've been easy for the utility companies to forego uh, those niceties and general rules. Uh, so certainly, I think this is a great time to send both of the utility companies, uh, Libby Utilities and National Grid, uh, a gentle letter reminding them that it's inappropriate to put meters on the front of uh, historic homes. Uh, you might want to preface it by just saying just the 40C uh, historic district. You might want to include all national register historic properties in the city. You might even want to include all significant properties listed in the city. Um, I think that that's very reasonable. Yeah. I don't think that they should be. I, I actually had sympathy <laughs> for the uh, couple who own the home on High Street. They had bought the home two years ago and then they did a bunch of work. And you know maybe it was a uh, bad judgment on their part, but ultimately I, I blame the utility companies. They should have known full well that that was completely inappropriate to put the uh, those electric meters um, right on the front of their historic home. That, that, that was just horrible. And now we've seen that on a couple of other historic homes as well. And uh, it, it, it's not right. In fact, I was driving around town, around the city recently, and I saw that they had done it on other historic properties, albeit not in the uh, MGL 40Cs, but they were clearly historical properties, early properties, and it shouldn't be done. And I think it's a good time for us to uh, proactively call them out on it. And I'm happy if you're, if you're willing to do something like that in the near future, I'll certainly ask our board to send a complimentary reinforcing it as well. And we don't have... Um... I know other, I, I know at least with state of Rhode Island, they have um, an ordinance across, I believe the entire state that prohibits national grid uh, from placing gas meters um, on the exterior or forcing homeowners to put their, their gas meter or electric meter on the exterior of their houses. Um, and that was, oh God, that, that was passed maybe 10-ish or so years ago. Um, but it is a blanket ordinance across the entire state. Now, I don't know if we can do such a thing in, in Fall River but um, you know, do... I think Massachusetts has it already. And I think it's just being ignored. I think uh, under Mass Historic Commission, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I, I think that that's, that is the rule. Um, but I would say even without, even if that's not the rule, we should, I, honestly, I think if we just ask utilities mm -hmm. not to do that and call them out on it, I think that they would change their, their um, <laughs> actions it would be good also to get a letter at least to the homeowners initially in the 40c uh, mm -hmm. indicating that you know they i don't think they can force them to put the the meter on the exterior of their house um but they can indicate that um you know it could go in the back or somewhere where it's not seen um if liberty utilities is that set on updating their you know their infrastructure um with regard to um, uh, what do you call it? Um, with regard to the um, other houses in across the city that are not part of Forty C, that's I don't know how we can get that. Well, what well, we could what we could do is maybe um, just a letter to the editor in the newspaper, so that the general public can see if they have a house that is. The, you know, a historic house, even if it's not on the 
in the 40C, but just on the register or any property on the register, that they have the right not to have it on the front of the house. And for historic purposes, it really should not be on the front of the house. So we could always, you know, we could do a letter to the editor. We could also even do it at, um, you know, a, a, what do you call it, a citizen input at a council meeting or something, just to get the word out to people or somehow we could put it on our Facebook page. Uh, maybe uh, the Preservation Society could put it on their Facebook page as well. Just to, you know, to let people know. Yeah, I agree. I'm inclined that a letter to the utilities company should be regarding MGL, 40C, and all national register properties. I, I agree. Well, I, I think not... even city on the, on the historic significant structures list, I think. Yep. And, no. Go ahead. Yeah. And I think that should be referring to the front of the properties. You know, I'd, I'd love to say it can only be done on the back, but I think reasonably speaking, it could be said yeah. that it shouldn't be on the front. Once right. they're on the side, even if it's viewable, it's a little bit it's out there. of the vision mm -hmm. line. I think that that's fair. Now, would the, would, in the, in the case of what's happening over on Rock Street, <laughs> um, would Liberty Utilities, would they have to go through the building department to get permits to do this type of work to install on the exterior of houses um or do they just kind of i don't know how that works do they over do they supersede i guess the building department in terms of that in, t in terms of their work i don't really know i suppose we could find out through the through danny agia on the engineering department it's probably like a blanket uh, permit for general gas repairs and upgrades um I mean, I think all of us who have gas coming into our homes, when we initially buy the house and get the service, I think we waive um, right, certain rights for the gas company, utility company to come onto the property and do repairs and things. Um, but like you said, I think that where they can put the meters is, is, uh, should be controlled by ordinance. There are very quickly. There are there are actually state laws that uh, dictate that the authority enforcing the code is the the uh, winning individual. I guess whoever the authority enforcing the code is will dictate or or specify where these things are located and how. Uh, the other thing is that most utility companies their jurisdiction ends at what they call first point of attachment, okay? Uh, now, uh, just going around that, uh, we can clarify that with one call to, to Glenn Hathaway, I guess. Uh, but there's a, a meeting tomorrow. Uh, I actually spoke to Zachary uh, of the gas, he's the superintendent for these gas lines. And, uh, there's a meeting tomorrow at one o'clock on the corner of French and Rock Street. Uh, I spoke to him and I was speaking to Jason today. We tried to get them on the Zoom meeting this evening, but he was unable to do that. Uh, but he wants to get together as quickly as possible because they're getting ready to proceed out there. And uh, so if nothing else, we'll just sit talk with them tomorrow and find out what's going on. He did say he's uh, amenable to putting meters other locations than the front of the house. He said that's not a big deal. They understand that and they try and work with owners uh, constantly to do that. So uh, we should, if there's anybody that can attend tomorrow at one, uh, we can go over there and, and chit chat with Zach. It'll be on the corner of French and Rock, only because we didn't have any given building in mind. This way we can walk up and look at a few buildings and, and discuss uh, the situation. So. But again, uh, I'm, I'll try ca calling Glenn in the morning uh, and finding out who has authority. Uh, normally it was under the, the plumbing department usually 
had authority unless it's changed. Now you got to realize I'm not uh, deeply involved in the business anymore for you know 19 years, but the gas installations were usually part of your plumbing inspection. So uh, again, that all falls under Glenn Hathaway. So Glenn would would have his finger on that throttle. Okay. Um, would it make sense initially to contact Glenn to just remind him about, especially for the houses in the 40C, and then from there, um, getting a letter out to the two utility companies, um, you know, indicating you know, that they shouldn't be doing that on the front of houses, that you know, ideally they should be mm -hmm. seeing, um, in particular the houses that are or the buildings that are in the 40C, but then also with the National Register. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I, I don't mind. Time. I don't mind calling Glenn tomorrow and, yeah. and reviewing that with him uh, on the phone and getting that squared away. And I'll definitely be uh, at one o'clock out there on the corner of French and Rock waiting for uh, Zach. Uh, again, I, I hope there are others that can make it. Uh, I start work at one. Um, if I can get my boss to agree for me to start later, then I will. But I, I don't know. Okay. It just depends. Yes, Jim, you want to be there? I I I, I want to be, but I can't. Uh, but I would also suggest maybe a a, a quick uh, no email over to. Uh, uh, maybe yeah. um, Michael Scott, Michael Scott, that name doesn't sound right. Uh, over at Mass Historic Commission, who might be able to uh, clarify whether the state has uh, uh, guidelines or ordinances on that. Okay. It also might be <laughs> worth, yeah. I mean, if there's nothing set in stone, it might be worth us having a conversation at some point about going before the ordinance committee. and. Um, Seeing if we can can get an ordinance for this particular issue, especially anything on the significant structures list in the city. Yeah. In, in, in talking to Jack uh, to Zach, uh, I don't think he'll have an issue if we can give him a week or two of notice to attend our next meeting, mm -hmm. so that we could then be able to look at face to face uh, discussion. Yeah, Rick, do you have a, a, a copy of the footprint of the 40C Historic District? Do you want me to send you that in an you, email? You know, I should have, but I, yes, would you do that, please? And then I'll print some out for him tomorrow. Yes. He has a, uh, uh, another individual that's going to be working these same properties uh, with him. So, yeah, send it over and I can make a few copies. That would be much appreciated. Okay. So well, lots of letters, phone calls. So, um, okay. So, was there anything, anything else regarding that? I no, I think we it, the work is starting soon. So, I think the the faster we can get this going, um, at least for the forty C. But I know uh, Liberty is doing work across the city, really. Um, so, uh, Jim, do you know when they're supposed to be starting work in your neighborhood? I, I don't know the exact date. Okay. okay, so, all right. So Rick, you're going to, you mentioned you're going to call Glenn. Correct. Uh, Zach tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I'll try to, I'll try to get there. I may be working remote tomorrow, so I'll try to get there. Um, That'd yep. be nice. Yep. And um, in the meantime, I will, I will also just send an email over to Glenn, just reminding him. Um, and then, uh, we have a letter to Liberty Utilities, National Grid, um, and uh, I'll look to see who at Mass Historical Commission. I wonder if, um, oh, who's the new, is it Jennifer, I think her name is? Jennifer, yeah, Jennifer Dougherty. I Dougherty. Think. Yeah. Um, I wonder if she might know, I can send, I can send her an email. Um, and who else? Yeah. Right. Does that sound good? Yeah, I don't. I don't know who Jennifer. Is. She must be new. I remember Chris Skelly. 
She's hmm. yeah, Jennifer took over. Huh? Did Chris retire? I don't know. <laughs> I know now Jennifer's the new contact person, so yeah, Chris left. Oh, when was this? Maybe it was in the spring. Oh boy. Have you been emailing him? <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's not responding. Uh, yeah, Jennifer took over for Chris. I want to say in the springtime uh, about the springtime. It's been a little while. Yeah. Yeah. So, but she's pretty. She's very responsive. Um, okay. I, Jason. Yes. Um, I had two things I wanted to add as as like a citizen input, and I but I missed that and. Mm -hmm. Uh, so just like an appeal, if I can have a few moments when you guys are done. Okay. Um, was there anything else regarding Liberty Utilities? No. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that we reopen citizen input. Mr. So. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, motion and a second. All in favor? Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, folks. Uh, I'll just I'll do this briefly. Uh, the first one was an easy one. I, Je Joyce, I want speaking specifically to you, Joyce. Yes. Earlier in today's meeting, you said there should be someone on a local level who can uh, make decisions or put, provide input on these federal tax historic credits. And I want to let you know, Joyce, you are empowered. Uh, this board knows it. You are the you are the board. So that may sound kind of scary, but it is on you. Uh, and I actually uh, uh, commend everyone on tonight's uh, committee for the way you voted. That was a sensitive issue, and uh, it, and I think you were all brave. Well, I have to speak to uh, our president about that. Uh, <laughs> see if he's willing to uh, delegate or not delegate. But, uh, I'll let you know. I'll speak with Jason. Yeah, it's it is you. And, that, and that's why the letters come to you because it is your committee. <laughs> right note it right jason yeah yes uh the other thing i want to mention i just wanted to add on to the uh, property on highland ave the nursing home that uh is proposing to convert to uh nine unit uh condominiums mm -hmm. uh, just a couple points on that uh one in general i've noticed the zba uh being more conservative lately about handing out variances and I think that the ZBA is going to appreciate input from you in the neighborhood. Um, if no one objects or has any comments, they might just let it roll right in. Um, but I think if they get input from you or the neighbors, I, I think that's gonna be appreciated by the ZBA. Uh, I also think it's gonna be very important to get some input from the neighbors I, I just, it's such a, it's a, it's a sensitive neighborhood that is, I think, single family zoned. And to have a, a, um, a big change like that, I think it's, um, it's important to have the neighborhood have some input. I don't, I, unfortunately, I don't think the neighborhood association is active right now, but. Um, it's not. Yeah, it's too bad. But the abutters, it would be, sure, it'd be nice to get some input from the abutters. I, well, one of the abutters next door, and that might be, so what they might be thinking why they can go forward with this is because they, um, because it was a nursing home, obviously, so it wasn't just like a one family thing, and then the building directly, um, if you're facing it to the right of them, is the, uh, the Buddhist temple. Yeah. So yeah. they might be looking at that as, oh, well, you know, they don't conform either. Yeah. So, well, I, I got to tell you, gonna I, I got to tell you, my, my gut is I'm not against it being condominium units, but I'm a little concerned about it being nine units. Oh, I am too, especially uh, having worked in that building as long as I did. There yeah. is no way they're going to get nine condos in there unless they are just studios. No, they absolutely they no could way. be. There's a demand for less expensive. Yeah, I know. Units. But my like bet is one. that they've already drawn up plans for nine units. Or six because they're probably all, they're probably shooting for nine, which is their yeah how they're going to make the most money. But they've probably got a plan already to do maybe six. Uh, yeah. So I I'd, I'd keep that in mind. And then I think my last point on that is that um, maybe 
what the historic commission could be doing is is uh suggesting that um if if they're talking about restoring the exterior and applying the federal historic tax credits then you would support those efforts but as far as supporting efforts to build a nine unit condominium complex you don't need to support that um but if, if they're coming to say hey we're going to do some stuff whatever we're doing with the building we're gonna we're promising to preserve the exterior now that's something you can jump on and say we would support an exterior preservation because that would at least come with a preservation restriction deed mm -hmm. uh, so just some food for thought and uh good luck it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays forward yep thank you for letting me speak tonight i appreciate it thank you very much for coming before us tonight um is there anything anything else that we need to go over no all right um so our next scheduled meeting is Tuesday, September 20th, uh, 2022 at 6 p.m. Um, <clears throat> may I get a motion to adjourn at 726? I'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. I'll second that motion. Okay, a motion and a second to adjourn um, at 726 p.m. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Great. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Good night, Thank everyone. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Hope to see many of you tomorrow afternoon.